Hey, your pal Mike Shea from Cyflourish here with a special episode of this show. Uh, today, we are going to build an adventure together. This show is about the Lazy DM's Companion. I am currently running a Kickstarter for my latest book, The Lazy DM's Companion, the third book of the Lazy Dungeon Master series, including Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master, The Lazy DM's Workbook, and now The Lazy DM's Companion. The Kickstarter is going on right now on Kickstarter, depending on when you're watching this video. It is going on during the month of October. So if you're watching in the month of October 2021, the Kickstarter is going on now. If it is after that, you can either pre-order the book or you can buy the book directly. So hopefully all of those options are available to you. So I've run a couple of Q&A videos before. Uh, I wanted to open up and just say anybody that has any question at all about the Kickstarter or production of the book or the book itself, we have these Q&As where you can do it. And one of the questions that came up wasn't a question so much as a statement was, I would really like to see you use the book, right? Can we watch you use it? And I'm like, sure, like, let's, let's do that. So today we are going to use the Lazy DM's Companion to build an adventure. Uh, I am live on Twitch while I am doing this. So people are watching me actually build an adventure from my book live, which is a little, a little stressful, but I think we're gonna get through it just fine. So I'm excited for it. Anybody that has questions in Twitch, I will be keeping an eye on the questions. And if you have any questions, you feel free to ask them and we will answer them while we build an adventure. So let me post the link for the Kickstarter. The, the link to the Kickstarter, by the way, is down in the show notes below. So if you if you are listening to this on a podcast, if you're watching this on YouTube or you're checking out on Twitch, in all those cases, you can find links to the Kickstarter in, in various show notes. So yeah, so building an adventure, I did not pre-plan what I wanted to do, but I do have a, a case for this, which is my wife's birthday is coming up, and I, I think she would like it if I ran a D&D adventure for her birthday. So there are only, when I'm coming into this, I don't have any adventure plan. I don't have any ideas yet, except there are two things I'd kind of like to do. One is she's really enjoyed a lot of the Feywild stuff. She's enjoyed playing a bunch of the Witchlight adventures and stuff like that. So I think I would like to definitely have ties into the world of the fairy, the, the world of the Fey. Two, it would be really nice if I could fit in a unicorn somewhere. The unicorn is my wife's totem animal. When we got married, one of the things that we we joined together was her collection of first edition D&D stuff, a huge collection. We have it over in the shelf right over there. I don't have any first edition D&D stuff, but she does. And inside the front corner is a stamp of a unicorn that she put in there to identify that this book belongs to Michelle. So I think that's awesome. And she loves unicorns. So I'd like to find a way to put in a unicorn. I will not threaten a unicorn. The unicorn will not be a will, will not be under under threat or you must go rescue the unicorn before it is sacrificed to the dark altar of, the, of a god. No, we're not going to do that. But it would be nice if there was some other way that a unicorn could be involved. We'll have to see as we as we do the adventure itself. So uh, the way that the Lazy DM's companion kind of works is there's sort of two different ways you can go about generating an adventure. And I'm going to try to use the sample chapters as much as possible for this because they are already available to everybody. So everybody can download it. Everybody can see it. Everybody can see the stuff that I'm using to build an adventure. In the last few uh, pages of this uh, are, are what we're going to be using the most. And those pages include the two-page core adventure generator tables. And then there are two scenarios, the protect, protect the village and the keep. So... The first thing that a that a DM who is using the DM the lazy DM's companion needs to do is decide: Am I going to make a more general adventure, where I'm using the general adventure builder and then kind of fleshing it out with all the other tables that are in the book? Do I want to use one of the themes like protect the village or the keep? And there's a whole there's a whole variety of these. There's a number of different sort of big scenarios that you can use. There's a heist, there's the search for the artifacts, there's hunt down the beast. There's a bunch and they're all based kind of like on movie themes. So it's like Jaws or Aliens or Apocalypse Now or Raiders of the Lost Ark. You know, there's a lot of them are built on ones of John Wick you know, or a Kill Bill slash John Wick kind of style. Hunt down the people who, you know, you don't like, right? Go kill bad lieutenants. So uh, you could choose any one of those bigger themes, right? And that can work pretty well. Or you can pick a general theme. I, the Protect the Village is based on the movie Seven Samurai, and I like it a lot, except my wife has done a bunch of these because I've been using them. So she has seen, she has seen that one a lot. And then the other one would be the keep. And the keep is the idea that there's some powerful entity that's trapped in some kind of cell and there's a group trying to break it out. There's another group trying to fight it. And then your group is trying to figure out what you need to do. She's done, she's done this in other regards too. So both of the themes of these two are probably not 
I think what I'm going to use today. Scipio says, do you want to try to use the sample map? Yes, absolutely. So the last page of the DM companion is a sample map, a general purpose dungeony sort of map that is done by Daniel Walthall. Daniel is doing all of the maps for this. I think we're going to have about six maps in the book and uh, that those six maps, uh, work hand in hand with the 10 maps that are inside the lazy dms workbook so between the two books you have 16 different maps some are going to be focused maps on dungeons other ones are much bigger maps of like villages and locations and stuff like that but daniel did put together this sort of mixture of natural and and worked stone place dungeon cellars catacombs whatever you want them to be right and the idea here is we don't define is it, a, is it the under, under city of a castle? Is it cellars underneath a, an inn? We don't determine that. We get to decide what this one is. We kind of put a bunch of features in there. So I'm probably going to try to use this map in this. So I think this is a long-winded way of saying, I'm going to try just the, I'm going to try just the core adventure generator tonight and see where this takes us. And yeah, we'll see. So what I also did for this is I set up a single page lazy DM prep template. This is actually available to everybody as well. I kind of, I kind of put it together today and I think it's actually a pretty good idea. If you were just running like a single session, you don't need the whole notion, the whole notion lazy DM campaign package, which includes a whole bunch of different pages and databases and stuff. Instead, if you're running a single session, you really only need the eight steps. So I put together this one template and I'm going to use this template as my guide tonight. So if you would like a copy of this template, it will be available uh, in the show as well. You can, you can, you can click on the show notes and get a copy of this template. It is also one of the sub pages of the main notion template. So if you get the main notion D and D you know, main notion, lazy D and D lazy DM template package. This is included in there and you can duplicate just this page and use it for your own one shot games. Uh, so I'm going to be editing this one a lot. I'm pretty sure this is not the primary. Let me just make sure it is not. So this is my, my copy of it. Good. So we're going to call that make an adventure. Hey, I'm going to cut out the intro because I don't need it. So I don't have characters yet, right? I, this, this adventure that I would be running is probably going to be in November. Whoa, that was bad. I don't know why, why did it delete the uh, delete the whole table. There we go. So one of the things that this does, for example, is it has the tables for for keeping track of all of your character information in it. That's I think that's a handy way to say like who, what's the highest passive perception of everybody. But I don't have any characters yet, so we don't know. So what's the strong start? I really don't know yet. But we're gonna we're gonna fill this out uh, as we go. I'm just gonna kind of clean the template up here. Figure out what my scenes are figure out what my secrets and clues are going to be, come up with some fantastic locations, figure out some NPCs, figure out some monsters to fight, figure out what my deadly encounter benchmark is going to be, come up with some treasure. So these are really the eight steps. Now I can only do seven because I don't have the characters. So I really only have to do seven steps to kind of feel comfortable about it, which is what's my strong start? What scenes are likely to occur? What are my secrets and clues? What fantastic locations will they explore? What NPCs will they meet and could talk to? What monsters might they fight? And what treasure might they acquire? So pretty straightforward as far as the steps are concerned. But now I need to get an idea about this adventure. And so I'm going to kind of add another section here, which we're going to call like the adventure outline kind of an outline. This is like, what's the deal, right? What's the deal with this? So let's go to our core adventure generator and let's start off by looking at a patron, right? So we want to have a patron. Somebody hires the characters to do a thing. I think, by the way, I'm going to aim for third level. Third level to me is a great, it's a great level for doing single session D&D games it, for experienced players, right? If you're doing D&D sessions for players who know what they're doing, third level gives them uh, access to all of the subclasses that it most, I think, right? Yeah, all of the subclasses happen at third or below, which means you have a much wider range of characters and players can kind of mix them out. Oh, I've never tried this this setup before. You suddenly go from having like one class to having hun you know hundreds of classes, right? So third level is a really good level characters are meaty. You can throw some good stuff at them and they're not going to get killed. They're not, but they're also not fifth level where things are very over, not overpowered, but like you know, you have to really turn the dials up at third level or fifth level. So third level is a good level. So we're going to shoot for third level, but we need a patron. So let's roll on a patron. I got my dice right here. I set up my dice and we're going to roll. I'm going to roll two, one for behavior and one for ancestry. So what, what is this person like? And for behavior, I have a seven and ancestry, I have a 13. So uh, behavior is a seven. Seven is a superior, mm. uh, a superior ghost. All right. So let's just jot that down, right? So who we have a snobby ghost, right? The snobby ghost is hiring the characters to do something, all right? 
What are they trying to do? And so you, you, if, what I like to do is I like to throw the ideas on the table first. I do a bunch of rolling. I see what I get. I jot them down so I remember what I rolled. And then I take a look at what comes out. And sometimes it works really well. And sometimes I just go like superior doesn't work. So I'm going to roll again on that table. It's perfectly fine if you look at something and you're like, I don't know how that works, right? I don't know how that plays in with this other stuff. Uh, then you roll again. But I think superior ghost right now works pretty well. Quest. What quest is the uh, superior ghost going to send the characters to do? Uh, 12 is activate a monument, right? A superior ghost wants the characters to activate a monument. All right, cool. So now there's a little bit of sub roles in this, right? Like what kind of monument do they have to roll on? Where are they have to, where do they have to do this? So this is where we get into these two really big, powerful tables, right? Which are the locations, monuments, and items, and the condition, description, and origins. And you mix these, these tables here. The, there, there's six rows, 20, 20 values each for all of these different things. And you can actually tie these in with all of the adventures that you would generate from the rest of this book. So even if you were using one of the bigger templates, like the Protect the Village template, uh, you could still dive into this to do like weird items or to do other, other stuff. So, so that's cool. So what monument do they need to activate? So we're gonna start by rolling on the monument, on the monument table with the middle one, just to get the monument in, in place. They need to activate a, I rolled a six, a megalith. Okay, right, so we got a megalith. What kind of megalith? So now we go down to the origin, the, the condition description and origin. We want to determine what kind of megalith it was. So we basically roll condition description and origin, right? Ooh, I rolled, I didn't, that doesn't count, right? So we are going to start off with 19 and three, 19, a crystalline obsidian. Uh, well, let's see. I don't know if you can have a crystalline obsidian. Activate a crystalline obsidian. I think I might have to roll one of these again. Uh, megalith, right? So we know we have that. But and who's the origin? Who made this megalith? What 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 role was that? We got a two. It is Elvin. Okay. You know, now we touched a touch of the fae, right? Crystalline. I can't spell crystalline. Oh come on. A crystalline obsidian, Elvin. A crystalline elven, we'll go with, I don't know about a crystalline and obsidian. Crystalline, I'm on board. I think I might re-roll obsidian because it doesn't quite fit with elv elvish. Maybe it's like, you know, it's shifting in and out of phase. Maybe that's the problem is that maybe it exists. Ah, okay. What if it exists across the sealy and unsealy sides of the fey? And it shifts from crystalline to obsidian and back and forth. And the ghost is like, it needs to be stabilized. This, this one megalith actually sits between two worlds, the Feywild and the Shadowfell. And it's shifting back and forth, this megalith, right? And we need to stabilize it. So maybe that is, maybe that's the goal, right? This crystalline, I mean, it's almost like two sides, right? Two sides of a you know, yin and yang kind of thing going on here. All right. That feels pretty good. I, could, I can work with that. So what else do I need? Crystalline Superior Ghost wants the characters to activate a crystalline elven obsidian megalith. So one thing I think I'm going to do is I rolled the origin and I got ghost, but I kind of want to know what kind of ghost, right? So I think I'm going to roll again on the ancestry table. You can actually just double up on a single table, right? You can roll a couple of times and get, get certain things. So I'm going to roll again, but if I hit ghost, I'm going to roll something else, right? And if I hit like undead ghost, you know, that's not going to work, but let me see what kind of ghost we've got. Uh, 15. Is that a ghost? A, oh, a talking, a superior talking animal ghost. It's not a unicorn, is it? Oh, maybe, right? Superior talking animal ghost. What if the a, a unicorn, what if the unicorn's kind of a dick? That would be like, what if the unicorn is really sort of haughty? Right. And my, and my wife will be like, a unicorn. I love it. And be like, I don't know. I'm not sure if you're the proper adventurers for this. I'm, I'm looking, are there any other adventures about you? are The only ones that I've seen. And you're like, well, we can help you. It's like, well, yes, perhaps you could, but perhaps maybe somebody else could. So what if we had a superior ghost unicorn that needs help? Cause maybe it's trapped between worlds. It's not dead. Maybe 
right? But maybe it's kind of stuck between worlds because of this weird obsidian megalith, right? And it needs the it needs the the crystalline elven obsidian megalith needs to be put back in phase so that the unicorn can can return once again. That could be, you know, I'm I'm good with that. I, I think that that is pretty cool, right? I've got my Feywild influences. I've got a unicorn, right? I'm only I haven't even started yet. Well, we're like we're like 15 minutes in, and I already got a good seed to to, to an adventure. But I got a lot of work to do if I'm going to get this thing into a runnable state. Okay, so I have my snooty ethereal unicorn. That's great. I have my quest, right? So where is that? Where does the megalith exist? What location does it exist at? And I've got this sort of one d twenty locations table. So if the if the unicorn is too much of a snot, the adventurers may not want to do the quest. That is true. So you got to be careful, right? And the unicorn could be like starting off. No, no, I no, I'm sorry. No, you you are the ones that you know. Yeah. I don't see anybody else. Yeah, you are the, you're definitely the ones that need to help me with this, right? So I'm going to roll on a location. Let's find a location. And I rolled a 12, and 12 is a dungeon. Hey, it's Dungeons and Dragons, and I got a dungeon. So the megalith exists in a dungeon. Cool. All right. And in this case, the dungeon is actually a place to trap things, right? It's a dungeon. It's not a dungeon in like the D&D general sense of like underground place. It is a dungeon in the sense of a place that traps that traps things, which is kind of interesting because is the unicorn a good guy? Why did the unicorn get trapped here? Now I have my location and now I can start to go back and I can use my condition descriptions and origins again, this time for the location. So who built this dungeon? Whose dungeon is this, right? Start with that. And we rolled an 18. It is a shadowy dungeon that fits, right? All right. A shadow it exists in a shadow dungeon. Cool. All right. So then let's give it some uh, conditions and descriptions because we like to, we like to really add, add flavor to a lot of this, right? So condition is seven and description is nine. So we have a necrotic, an ancient necrotic shadow dungeon. That's pretty good. Ancient necrotic shadow dungeon. I really, I'm digging this. And what I'm, what I'm digging about it is like, there's lots of interesting things that can be trapped in a shadow dungeon, right? A dungeon, maybe this is a dungeon that is built by the Unseelie Fae, right? Maybe they, this is where they trap stuff and they trapped a unicorn and you have to kind of trap, you have to trap different creatures different ways. And the, the unicorn is trapped in this obsidian megalith, but if it can switch its phase to the, you know, other side, the unicorn can be freed and it can be rescued, right? So it's this haughty, superior, you know, we've decided that this is a, we're going to superior talking animal ghost, haughty unicorn, right? Once the character is to activate a crystalline elven obsidian megalith, the megalith exists in an ancient necrotic shadow dungeon. What object, right? I'm, I'm kind of adding another, another thing here. What object could help them put the, the, could put the, the megalith back in phase, right? Could shift the phase. So we're going to create a magical object here, right? And we're going to use the same, same tables here. We're going to use the item table for this. And we're going to use the item table a lot because we're also going to come up with some relics for some magic items, right? And so we're going to use, we're going to use the item table for that too. So we have, we roll on the item table, we get a three. It is a ring. Okay, cool. You need a ring. And then, so what's the condition and description and origin of this ring? So we'll start, we'll roll those two. Condition is 20. Description is 10. It is a silvered festering, silvered festering. Oh, another 20. Abyssal ring. Oh, oh, all right. The megalith requires a silvered festering abyssal ring to return it to the proper phase. All right, cool. A bunch of people are yelling night hag. I see night hag, night hag, night hag, night hag. Somebody swing set park wrote night hag, night hag, night hag. Let's see where the, let's see where the roles take us. Uh, that's a good idea, right? And a night hag and a night hag. It's a third level for a single night hag would be a pretty good boss. Cause night hags, I, I don't think there is, I don't know. They could be terrible. I think they're pretty high in challenge rating. 112 hit points. This is, what's well, CR5? No, CR5 is about right. So a, a Night Hag, we'll, we'll, we'll keep Night Hag and we'll put Night Hag in the back. That, a Night Hag would be a pretty good, pretty good villain for this. So we'll, we'll consider that. You don't have to use the tables for everything. If you've got ideas, 
great. And you throw them in, right? The whole idea with the whole companion and everything else is, is shake your mind up and get ideas going, right? I never would have come up with this. Who the hell would have come up with this, right? On their own, nobody, right? But the, a, a, an, a, an inspired creative brain with some, with some random tables can do magic, can build worlds nobody would ever create before. And that's exactly what we're doing right now. It's really fun. I'm enjoying this. It's working. It's good when it works. Cause you like, you think like, oh my God, what if I roll and they all suck? All right. And I can't come up with, I roll like five times. I come up with nothing. No one's going to want to buy my book. Right. And no, it turns out I'm, I'm happy to say so far. It seems to be working. So said Park says abyssal. Of course the ring belongs to a night hack. Yeah. Yeah. So what else do we need? We're going to want to fill out. So we, we have this idea that there is a dungeon. Inside this dungeon is a megalith. The megalith requires a key to put it back in phase. That key is a festering, a fe silvered festering abyssal ring, right? And it's probably down there stored in it. Somebody has to go down into this dungeon and somebody has to go down in this dungeon and get this key. Okay, cool. What else? You know, that's, I mean, it looks like we've got a pretty solid adventure here. We can say, so I'm going to do something about inhabitants, right? I want to know like who, and we're going to kind of jump down to the monsters section here. Oh, so deadly encounter benchmark. We can fill this out pretty easily. This gives us a good gauge about like how tough are things, right? So we have third level characters. We're going to, I'm going to assume I'll have five players. So that's 15. And then a quarter of 15 is about four. So the, the deadly encounter benchmark is four, which means a night hag is a CR five. Uh, is potentially deadly, but on her own, probably not so bad. If it was her and three other people, that'd be pretty bad. So deadly encounter benchmark is at round four, but we're also going to look at like, what are some other inhabitants? Whoops. What are some other inhabitants that might exist in this place? And we go down to dungeon monsters, right? So we have, Hey, look, it's dungeon monsters, right? There's a lot of dungeon things going on in here. So who was, who oh, was uh night hag was uh Scipio's idea. Everything is Scipio's idea. That dude's got every, he's, he's Scipio. So, uh, dungeon monsters. We're going to roll a handful, um, a handful on this. You notice, uh, cynical viewers that it does not say cultist, 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 cultist on there. Uh, I believe cultists are on air only twice, which under cultists and under human cult fanatic. So, yeah. oh yeah, because we have different kinds. We have elven cultists, for example. So here's a trick, right? It, it, here's, well, you can't quite do it with this table. You can do it with some other tables, and I'll, sh I'll show that. How you can mix and match a couple of these, uh, a couple, you can roll twice on the same table and use the first word and the second word to generate some stuff. So we are going to, I'm actually looking at it, and I think I might remove the origin. So instead of human bandits and elf cultists and human cult fanatics, I might just make them bandits and cultists and cult fanatics and then hunters. And that way you can use this one, but you could roll on the uh, ancestry table here to determine what kind of thing they are. I think I might try that. I'm going to talk to, I'll talk to Scott about that and maybe we'll figure that out. So anyway, let's roll some dungeon monsters. So we've got three giant rats. We've got 13, 15 ogres. All right. So let's put some, we have giant rats. We have ogres. It's just giving us some ideas about the kind of monsters that might be hanging out in this place. And we don't have to, we don't have to pick them. We can, we can flavor them differently. You know, we can do all kinds of things. So let's roll a couple other nine and thir uh, I already 13. I already rolled 13, nine and seven. Nine is shadows, seven skeletons and shadows. Okay. That makes sense, right? Shadows are nasty too, but shadows make a lot of sense for shadows make a lot of sense for for a Feywild, for a Feywild one. The Lazy Cultist Workbook. That's next. That's next Kickstarter. Cultist, cultist, cultists, I think it's gonna be called. So cool. So we've got that. So our location, we, we have kind of our main location, right? Which is the dungeon and, and it was it the uh, Shadow Dungeon? Ancient Necrotic Shadow Dungeon, right? It's a shadow dungeon and we're going to, we're going to say ancient and necrotic. Okay. That's cool. That's kind of the main place. And then we have to think about like what kind of things could be in various rooms and chambers here. All right. We're going to have to look at that. So I need, I need some other stuff though. 
right? Uh, so I've got NPCs. We're gonna we're gonna we want to come up with some NPCs. We want to come up with some scenes and some secrets and some strong starts. We we're, we want to eventually get to where we're filling out these eight steps, right? But I'm still kind of piecing everything together because we're just making it from raw stuff. So what's next? We already have our we already have our unicorn. Probably want a name for this for, for our friendly unit. And I've got some names. Every book I have, I've got some names, right? And so we have Shum, Agtos, Edbert. Edbert's pretty cool. Sicily, Olaf, Rosalind, Rosalind, Pearson, Boyle, Typhon. Typhon's pretty cool. And then you have sort of last name, Typhon, Lionstone. I don't know if that works for Prutha, Ingram. Ingram? Ingram's not bad. I think we'll go with Ingram, right? Ingram the unicorn. That, that works for me. So we have uh, NPC one is Ingram. Ingram is a superior unicorn ghost. Okay. What is there a is there a character from fiction who kind of fits kind of fits this motif? This sort of we we want somebody that's funny and is kind of haughty and superior, but likable too, right? This is the this is your quest NPC. Lauren Ingram Wildmare. That's not a bad name. Sunset Park got a good one. Lauren Ingram, Lauren. Lauren Ingram Wildmare, Wildmare. Yeah, I like that name. That's a good one. Jareth. Yeah, you need a section for the sacrificial dagger. <laughs> no, we're not sacrificing the unicorn. So yeah, so we got the superior unicorn ghost. I'm trying to I'm trying to think in pop fiction. I mean, I th I sort of already have, I have what I need. I don't really need a character from pop fiction. I already have an idea of like how this unicorn is going to act, right? I've I've already got this in my in my head. Oh, he could be a little bit like in Downton Abbey, right? A bit a bit just kind of like you know. Oh, I don't know if that's proper, right? I don't know if that's the right thing to do, and kind of. You know, he's not a jerk, right? And he believes, he, he's just a little bit, you know, like I am a unicorn from the Fae. I'm not some deer running around in the woods, you know? So we could probably use, you know, Carson from Downton Abbey, right? He's got an air of superiority, but he's a lovable, he's a lovable fella. So I think that Lauren will be like that. She will, she will, we will use Carson as, as we will use Carson as our, as our angle there. So we've got that. We'll probably have a, a few other NPCs that we're going to want to fill this in with as well. So let's talk about villains, right? We, we probably want to have a villain here. And I don't have a villain generator in the sample, but I do have them in the drafts. So as a villain, and I never remember which one of these books anything is in. We're going to use our God generator because I think we're going to, we're going to wrap up, you know, a, a shadowy sort of God over this place. I guess we're going to avoid the cultists. Nobody wants cultists. Okay, no cultists this time. My go-to. I don't know how to run a D&D &D game without cultists, but I'll give it a shot. So villains. Where's my villain generator? Villain generator, page 15. So this is the draft of uh, what will be in the, what will be in the D Lazy DMs Companion. So there will be a villain generator in here, right? So the, these villains look pretty powerful. So, ah, so I think we're going to... You know, I think we're going to skip rolling on the villain table because this is really meant for like a campaign villain. And I don't think we need a campaign villain. I think we like our idea. I, I'm, I'm going to go back to it. I think we like our idea of the night hag as a, as a main villain, right? So, right. Night hag is the main villain, but night hags definitely have heralds. So who is our villainous, our villainous herald, right? Who, who speaks for the night hag? A loyal villager. Right, so we have on the NPC a loyal villager who speaks for the night hag. Everybody wants Thumper. Man, Thumper's Thumper's done. Th Thumper got got killed with a invinerate and like what was it? A toll of the dead, and it was kicked against the wall. His body, his shriveled little body, was kicked up against the wall. Nobody wants Thumper back. Thumper's gone. An old crone. I don't know. I mean, yeah, that's interesting. And it could also be like a like a like a, a young boy, right? It was like, oh, you're going after crab apple? Ooh, you're not gonna like that. She's really bad. Crab apple's my friend. What is her motivation? What does she want to do with this whole thing down there? Eight. She wishes to escape. So she's trapped too. She's trapped in the dungeon, right? Night hag wishes to escape. 
Cool. And does she have a quest of her own that she is following when she's doing this? Uh, that's a D12 table. I didn't have enough room for a D20 table on here. We'll see if I end up with more room on this when we build it. But right now it's only D12. Her quest is a one to recover ancient artifacts. So she's been drawing in ancient artifacts. Why? Somehow to, to use it. If she brings enough, it'll disrupt the area maybe, like these relics. Seeking artifacts to end her escape. Okay, so we could have sort of an interesting thing. In order to get the ring, they must release the hag. That could very well be. What artifact might she need to release her? So let's go back. Let's try some stuff. That's a good idea, right? That she's been seeking artifacts. She's trying to escape. Well, what is she trapped in, right? She might be trapped the same way uh, that the unicorn is trapped. So we will go to our monuments again, and we're going to roll another monument, right? That monument is a 19. She is trapped in a cage. Good. That fits. What? Let's learn a little bit about this cage. It is a seven and four. It is a necrotic haunted cage. Necrotic haunted elven cage. Sometimes the dice work with you. She is trapped in a necrotic haunted elven cage, right? And she's trying to escape. What item does she need to escape from her cage? We go back once again and we roll on the item table and we get a six. Six, she needs a knife. What kind of knife? She needs an eight and a four, a thunderous haunted six tiefling knife. She needs a thunderous haunted tiefling knife. Tieflings are born of mortals. Help me out, people on Twitch. I believe tieflings are built of mortals and devils, right? And night hags are devils. So what if, what if is a very powerful phrase, by the way, when you're doing this stuff, what if is how you get to like try ideas out, right? So what if, what if the item she had was a dagger that she had used to murder her own tiefling child, a child born from her and a mortal man. And that's pretty dark. I was thinking, what if the villager, the, the loyal, what if that is her husband? a mortal man and maybe, maybe he is and maybe he loves her. Right. And she, and she, you know, she's ensorcelled him, right? She, he doesn't realize that she's a night hag and she's been doing this terrible stuff. He's like, look, my, my wife, we've been together for, a, you know, for many years, we lost our son. Well, she murdered the son. Right. And, and the son's spirit is trapped inside of the dad. And, you know, maybe he hands her this, this loyal villager, this collar of, of the, this, this, this loyal villager, no loyal and I had hands him and says, this is her, you know, this is her knife, right. That she has. And they take it and they're like, why does she have a knife like this? So, right. How dark do you want to go for a birthday present adventure? I know it's a little dark, but it's kind of, it's not that bad. It's not that terrible yet right it's just it's got a kind of a fun switch in here the switches they think oh we got to go rescue two people a unicorn and a nice old lady that belongs to this guy and for a child murder we might need safety well it's not on screen right yes we probably do but it's not on screen right it's not there won't be a you know there won't be a a visual of this having taken place i don't think but maybe it's maybe it could be a little bit dark well we'll we'll we'll, we'll keep that Yet he says, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll keep that. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. Did she murder her own child with the knife? And the knife is now haunted by the spirit of this child who wants revenge against the mother, right? And says, you know, yeah. I can always blame the stream viewers. I can always say, yeah, honey, I rolled the dice. I'm sorry. I'm sorry it turned out to be so horrible. It's, uh, I blame Twitch. I blame the people on Twitch, you know, leave a comment on the YouTube video. Have a ring and a slice of her birthday cake. All right. So that's kind of an interesting idea that gets starts. We're starting to get into some secrets and clues, right? So what is the, we're getting into some interesting stuff here. Use the knife 
and the blood of the child to seal some. Maybe, maybe she didn't murder the child. Well, it's still a knife. She trapped the spirit of her child. She trapped the spirit of the child into the blade, into this knife, and the child can be brought back if she is slain with the very knife. Right. That's not so bad. I mean, it, it, yeah. So, so uh, maybe, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll keep that on. We'll keep that on the back burner. We'll see if we can do that. What else do I need to do this? So I need some locations. We're gonna fill out this. We're gonna fill out some of this stuff. We've got our giant rats. We can have a lot of giant rats, right? Giant rats are CR one eight. So you can actually. So you can do eight for every challenge rating. So you can have up to twenty four. No, eight, 16, 24, 32 giant rats is is considered deadly that would be a lot of giant rats so we could do like giant rat swarms right that that can work ogres i think are they're pretty tough you might be able to do two ogres and they're cr2 so you could do up to two ogres uh, skeletons are cr1 quarter i know that so you could do up to 16 skeletons shadows i think are cr1 half you could do eight shadows but shadows are they hit above their weight class and then we have a night hag right so we got some good, I got a good pile of monsters in here. There's a lot of different interesting monsters. Shadows are brutal. Yeah, because they drain your strength. They're really cool. So we're, I, I'm, I feel good about the monsters. I feel like I've already, I can fill out the monsters. Now there's, there's kind of different ways to build an adventure that, that people go through when you're building just raw, right? We're, we're just, we had nothing when we started and now we've got stuff. And one of them is you fill out each room of a dungeon and you determine like what kind of monsters are in what room, right? Or you don't plan out what monsters are in what room and you improvise them as the characters are going through as the characters are going through the adventure so like we could say like the ogres what if they're the twins right ogres and they're called the twins and they could be like formorians right so formorians are sort of the i don't do they have formorians in 5e i don't think they do i don't even know how to spell them supernatural race in irish mythology there i don't think there are formorians in are there formorians in 5e if so f o f f o m no not not four like that ah here we go where are they from what are they in Ooh, look at those the monster manual oh formorians are in the monster manual okay cr8 so that's far too hard right they have this cool evil eye ability that's kind of interesting so what if these are like small formorians right I'm not going to take this stat block and lower it. I'm just going to take the ogre stat block, but I'm going to add, I'm looking at like what a Fomorian has and it has this sort of evil eye, DC 14 charisma saving throw, curse of the evil eye with a stare Fomorian evil eye, but on a failed save, the creature is also cursed with magical deformities while deformed the creature has its speed to have. So we're going to deform people. So I think we're going to have the twins, right? And what we need some, we need some Fomorian names. What will we go with? And Krish, right? Gelden and Krish are the twins. They are ogres, but they have the evil eye power. And we'll kind of improvise that, right? So their CR2, yeah, DC is probably at 12, right, on their attack. And the amount of damage that they do is probably like 14 points of psychic. But I like the I like the the idea that they kind of deform somebody. They can do that. So I think that that's cool. You know, we can just sort of grab some Fomorian traits and add them to our ogres, lower the damage, lower the DC. I can do that in my head. I don't, I don't need to sit down and do a whole big build. This is, so this is an important point. This doesn't really have to do with the companion, but it has to do with kind of design in general, which is you don't have to design your home game for publication. If you've got enough of an idea that you're like, I know I can handle that when I'm running it. You don't need to do any more with it, right? And I know I can take an ogre, turn it into a, a, a small Fomorian, and I don't need to do anything more with it, right? Maybe it's a half ogre with a Fomorian trait. So I don't need to sit and make a new stat block and figure everything out. I know that I can improvise. I know I can improvise that stuff. So we have the giant rats. These are probably the eyes uh, of the hag. We need a name for the hag, right? We got to call her something. Let's see if there's a cool, let's go up to our names. So we only have a tiny little patch of names inside this book. In the Lazy DM's workbook, we have tons of names. There's piles of names in the workbook. There's a whole page. I think I've got it over here. Where is it? You know, the, the Lazy DM workbook. I don't want to bang the microphone. Has Yeah, there's an entire, you know, a whole page full of names. That doesn't focus. Focus. There we go. Look at all those names, right? 
So lots of names in the workbook, but I'm going to use the ones that are in the companion because today is companion day. Cat claw, auntie. So they go, they often are called like auntie or grandmother, right? Mother cat claw. That's not bad. Mother night chaser. Mm. Gold rock, dark slicer. I like cat claw. Mother cat claw, right? Because we have cats and they just got, they just had their claws um, trimmed today. They were not happy about it. But we know what cat claws are like. So mother cat claw. So the evil, the, the, the eyes of cat, the cat claw eyes, right? Eyes of the mother, all right? The giant rat, she can see through the rats, right? They're, they're hers. The skeletons are probably unseely elf skeletons, right? And the shadows, would the shadows be different? Or are they also elven shadows? They could be Shutterkai shadows. Could they be feral cats? No, because I don't want to. I don't, I don't want, they're not going to want to kill cats, but giant rats, no one likes giant rats. No one has a problem killing giant rats. So I think the shutter, right? Shutter Kai are kind of different. They're, they're a type of elf, right? I don't know how to spell any of this stuff. They're sworn to the Raven queen. Yeah. So let's, oh, here's something else we'll do. I, I want to wrap the dungeon in a, with a theme, right? I want to, I want a theme. For, I mean, it's already ancient necrotic. I got that part, but to whom? So for this, we're going to go to the God generator 14. We're not making cultists, just gods page 14. This is a, right. In this case, the God is going to be a, not a God, but what do they call it? A, uh, what are the, the, like the, the fey, fey Lord kind of thing right? King and queen, I guess, right? So in this case, they are a fey, they are a fey lord, right? An arch fey, sorry, arch fey is what I'm looking for. So instead of, we're going to be making an arch fey. This place is a shadowy dungeon. So we're probably going to stick to the evil side of this. So you'd say like, what is the domain? This is kind of like building a god. You start off with the domain, right? So we're going to build a domain. We're going to roll a d20 on the evil, on the evil do domain and it's 16 and 16 is undeath. So we have a arch fey of undeath, right? That's kind of cool because that get, now we got the skeletons and the shadows. That makes sense, right? What is the symbol of this? We're probably going to roll a couple of times. This is another one where you can roll on this table twice and, and sort of mix and match, right? So this is the symbol that they're going to find. And it's four, 2 and 14, an eye and a droplet, right? So like maybe a crying eye, right? And like a, a un... A blind crying eye, right? That's the symbol of this arch fey, right? And then lastly, we want to make, have a name. And this is another one where you kind of mix and match two different phrases together. See what we come up with. 13 and 14. Pray, pray a bond, right? Pray a bond, pray a bond, pray a bond. The archfey of undeath. So, so we have a we have a god, right? We have an archfey, and we have an archfey to which this dungeon is built, right? It is a, it, this dungeon is built under the rulership of the archfey Preabon, uh, archfey of undeath, whose symbol is a blind crying eye. Cool. Now we've got a theme we can throw on top of this. So that's so that's pretty good. So one question I've got is so we can start hammering out some secrets let's 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 just let's you know we got we, we need some we need 10 secrets right oh we need a name for this poor sap the local villager who's in love with the old lady but it turns out he's he's probably an old guy too so he thinks like they're just two old people living together enjoying their lives ronald i think his name is just ronald ronald uh local villager loyal villager so let's see let's put him under npcs right let's give him a last name it doesn't have to be a two name well, we could, let's take a look we'll give him ronald what lionstone treason lion, lion ronald treason ronald treason loyal villager old villager in love with cat claw with mother cat claw but she uh, he refers to her as mother what carla mother carla right Old villager in love with Mother Carla, who's actually Mother Cat Claw. So one question I have, he loves her. She's trapped in this old elven dungeon. Where is the dungeon located? Where could you find it? I think if we go to, so in this one, we're going to, we're going to use a different one. So I think we have a villager, village generator. Another one. One day these will all be one book. Uh, that's a villain generator. No. Oh, it's called a uh, settlement generator. Damn it. 
Settlement generator, page six. Okay. So we're gonna we we do we need to build an entire settlement? Maybe not, but I do wanna pick the adventure the locations. I might end up filling this out with settlement. Adventure locations eight. It's a castle dungeon, so there's an old castle nearby, a ruined castle. And the dungeons are underneath that. So is that a secret? Underneath the old ruined castle. It's an elven castle, right? Is a dungeon of the shadow of the shadow fowl built in service? Okay, so we have that. That's one secret. Then the dungeon was built in the service of Preobon, Archfey of Undeath. Preobon, Preobon's um, built by cultists. No cultists. Preobon's symbol, sigil, is a blind crying eye. All right. And then, uh, so what do we have? I think, well, so uh, the, the unicorn angle. I, I have a feeling that the quest, I'm, I'm going to switch something out, which is the patron for it. I think I'm going to make Ronald the patron. Ronald hires the characters to find his wife. His wife wandered into they, they lost their son their son wandered one time she and her son wandered down into this place to you know to explore and she came out and he never came back and she then went back down there she went back down there well the problem with that is like when did she get trapped down there how long how long has she been trapped down there right maybe there is no maybe there is no son Maybe they're, they've never, like, the, he, Ronald, the woman that Ronald has seen and, and married and fallen in love with never actually existed. It was her image was kind of pushed to him. And he's always been trying to ask people to help, and nobody, nobody wants to go down there. So maybe Ronald, uh, Ronald has been married to, what's her name? Carla. For decades. But few have ever seen, but none have ever seen her. So that could be an interesting bit. Yeah, right. Fits his dreams. Um, so that way it's not his child that she sacrificed. It's somebody else, right? It's another another being that she sacrificed. But he kind of, he's kind of there. But I don't know if he's going to hire them then. I think we're back to the spectral unicorn hiring them. Preaban's dungeon holds many powerful enemies of the unseelie fae, right? So that could be a good one. What else do we, what other secrets do we have in this place? Let's go back to my top story here. What's his name? What's the Lauren Ingram, Ingram. I think we're gonna go with just Lauren, is Lauren Ingram, let's see. Ingram is trapped in the borders between the fae wild and the shadow fell in a megalith that exists within and between both worlds. Mother Catclaw holds a ring that can open, that can shift the megalith into one world and free Ingram. Mother Catclaw sacrificed her own child, her own son, probably uh, when he hit of age, right? So one thing about hags is they, when they, that they have children and the children act normal, uh, the children are totally normal until they hit like puberty. And then they start to take on the appearances of the fae or of the, of the hag, right? And then the hag usually comes and collects, collects them. In this case, I think she sacrificed, she sacrificed her son whose spirit is trapped and in, in the knife held by Ronald. So that could be fun. They might have to like leave the dungeon and go get the knife. Maybe. What other, we need, we need a couple more secrets, right? That's eight secrets so far. We're going to get, we got, we got two minutes left to come up with two more secrets. Hmm. So I'll tell you, I'm going to do two more secrets later. Let's do something else. So I've kind of got, okay, let's do a quick outline of scenes. So I think scene one is Ingram meets the characters in the deep wood, right? The characters <clears throat> go to the 
Shadow Dungeon. Dungeon of Shadows, right? So I don't need a trademark for this adventure, right? So we're just gonna call it Dungeon of Shadows, right? So what's our strong start? We're, we're now kind of getting back to filling in all the eight steps. And I think as the characters return from an adventure, and I think I'll, I'll prompt the players to talk about what adventure did you guys just do? They are approached by Ingram, the spectral unicorn who wants her body back. You know, good strong start, right? We go right into the quest. Is there is there an enemy that comes here? Do we, I don't think we're gonna start with a fight because you know we don't have to. I think it's pretty interesting. Start right with a unicorn showing up. Start right into an NPC interaction scene. I think that'd be great. A characters go to Dungeon of Shadows negotiation with uh, Mother Catclaw, free Ingram, right? Eh, nice straightforward thing. Recover the ring, right? And Mother Catclaw needs the the blade. Recover. Cat claws, blade. So I've got that. So the other thing that I would do, we're kind of hitting an hour, so I don't think I'm going to keep going. But the other thing I would do is I would I would take. I'm going to use this map, right, right here, and I would fill in these chambers. So this would be underneath the. There's obviously the the main archway. This is the megalith. Do I have a megalith somewhere else? I don't think I have a megalith somewhere else. So I think that megalith is where, you know, this this will become a megalith. I think she might be trapped. She could be trapped in this symbol here. We could put a cage there. And then the characters can kind of explore. And then there's rats and then there's shadows and there's other things that will fill this out. But what I would do to fill in some of these rooms is I would continue to roll on these monuments, the monument tables, right? That I can fill like monuments here and then different sort of origins and monuments or different descriptions for the monuments to fill in the details of probably you know, like six to eight chambers, right? And that would fill that up pretty easily with monuments and then features. Very, very straightforward, very easy to do. We'll do one as an example. So I'll, I'll pick one kind of thing. So a monument there would be a 13. 13 is a arcane circle. Hey, I think we've got that in the map. And what are some conditions and descriptions of it? 11 and four, uh, a radiant, a haunted radiant arcane circle, right? Likewise, I would add more NPCs because I think they, I think we would definitely want to have some areas where the characters meet some other people. Something else that we could do here is, and I'll roll one of them just to see, dungeon discoveries. So I have a mixture of like good things and bad things, right? And dungeon discoveries are good things. Oh, I got chambers too, but I, I, I think the map already has kind of chambers. So I'm, I, I don't know that I need to fill in the map with this, but maybe. But dungeon discoveries is a good one. I'm gonna roll, I'm gonna definitely roll one of these. What, what kind of dungeon discovery? Nine, an explorer's pack. So somewhere in here, probably under treasure, they would find an explorer's pack. Right, not the craziest dungeon, not the craziest exploration, but they might find stuff. So that way, you have a bunch of good things that they run into, a bunch of bad things that they run into. We have treasure that we can fill out here. The book also will have a. Let's take a look here. That's the other one. Somewhere in here, I have a treasure generator. I can't find. Is another this one? Page five. So page five, a treasure generator, so, right? So on this one, we can roll different kinds of magical treasure, right? A whole, and this is, this is to make kind of an easy version of the dungeon, the ones you would find in the DMG. This is a one page, uh, a one page quick dungeon generator says, what, what does it have in it? It has a 97, oh, that's pretty high. It has an instrument of the bards in there. Maybe I would put that in there if there is an actual bard in the in the in the group. That might be fun, especially for a one shot game. Giving an item as powerful as that, seventy three figurine, a silver raven, figurine of wondrous power, right? So we can get some we can get some stuff there. Then we can also build relics, right? And relics could be an item, and again you can tie an origin to it, and then you can say what spell is tied to it. So you can make some single use relics as well. So all of these are the kinds of tables and charts that we can use to build out and flesh out an entire adventure. Obviously, I got most of the way through. Maybe I might come back to it and we'll fill out, we'll fill out some of the lower details. Maybe that would actually be pretty useful. Filling out some of the specific details of the dungeon itself as we go. In the meantime, 
I hope this gave you a good idea about how you can use the Lazy DMs companion to, with, with nothing at all, with no prep done ahead of time, to really fire up your imagination and come up with some interesting ideas. I, like we, we sat here, we had nothing an hour ago, right? And now we've got a haughty celestial unicorn asking the characters to go into a Shadowfell dungeon. They have to negotiate between a night hag and, and, you know, the, and the unicorn to try to get the item from the night hag so they can release the unicorn. It's filled with rats that see through the night hag's eyes. It's got old elven skeletons. It's got a pair of Fomorian, you know, young Fomorians. All this adventure that's going on, right? And we, we did it all within an hour, right? Which from, from, sorry, with a lot of chatter. Right. I, I think you could probably whip up a pretty quick adventure this way in probably a half an hour if it's just yourself. Right. So, yeah. Anyway, I really enjoyed this. I hope you guys had fun today going through this with me, seeing how we can sort of just with some random tables, with a few dice rolls, with some thoughts and build a kind of a fun adventure. Uh, this has been awesome. So once again, uh, if you have liked what you saw today, and if you like what you see on the Kickstarter page, you want the sample chapters, please check out the Kickstarter. You can download the 17 page sample chapters, uh, set sample pages that I, most of which I used tonight, right? Or, or much of what I did tonight, I did using those tables. And you can get them right now for free. You don't have to pay anything at all. If you like it though, and you want the rest of the book, and maybe you want Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master if you don't have that, or the workbook if you don't want that, or you want new print versions of that, you can do so by checking out the Kickstarter. So so links to the Kickstarter in the show notes below uh, for one more time in Twitch. I'll go bang. If you do, please take a look. Uh, I've worked really hard on it. I'm really excited about this book. I love it. I use it. I use the material from it a lot. And uh, I think it'd be really cool. So thank you all very much for coming tonight. For the, for the viewers on Twitch, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Thank you for the great ideas, night hags and whatnot. And I will see you again soon. So have a great evening and uh, get out there and play some D&D.